How's it going everyone? My name is Keenan and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to answer the question that all your friends, colleagues, parents, teachers and friends are talking about. What in the world do civil engineers do? If you're in college thinking about majoring in civil engineering or going back to school to become an engineer or even just an interested bystander who just so happened to randomly click on this video, hopefully this will answer some of your questions or even inspire you to become a civil engineer. A bit of a background, I have my bachelor's and master's in civil engineering and have been working for a general contractor on the construction side of engineering for the past five years and it's the greatest thing ever. Civil engineering not only includes your typical sexy stuff like bridges, highways, stadiums and towers but also exotic things like wastewater lines or transportation engineering, soils engineering and liking the video because all these words are getting us so excited. The idea behind civil engineering is to build an environment where people are more comfortable and can live more efficiently. It's all around you. Why doesn't the window fall down when I kick it? Civil engineering. Why don't I fall through the floor when I'm jumping up and down? Civil engineering. Where did the poop go? Into pipes that were civilly engineered. There are many ways that you can go with your civil engineering degree, but I kind of wanted to funnel it down into two separate categories, design engineering and construction engineering. In design engineering, you can do your typical stuff like running calculations and yes, designing. Typically as a designer, you'll be given a concept from the architect that you try to help make a reality through engineering. So let's use the Marina Bay Sands Tower as an example. This tower is famous for its rooftop deck shaped like a ship called the Sky Deck. The Sky Deck spans over the three towers and has infinity pools, gardens, and basically walkways, a huge deck basically hundreds of feet in the air. So while the architect and most other people walking around see just a ship on top of three towers, the design engineer has to look deeper and see the steel beams that are hidden behind that nice ship. There's usually a balance between the architect and the design engineer as the design engineer tries to execute the architect's vision. Architects tend to like sleek, slender, sexy structural elements, but a lot of times those are not strong enough to actually support the structure. So I don't know if this is true, but I'm just making an example here. Maybe in the case of the Marina Bay Sands, the architect actually wanted that big ship to be like 10 feet thinner, but the structural engineer said, no, 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 I can't. I don't, there's, they don't make beams that thin that are that strong. I need to have you know this amount of space in order to make the structure work and then the architect will compromise and alter the design to accommodate. And that back and forth will typically happen as the design engineer tries to help the architect execute the vision. So in construction engineering, you get to do the fun part. Unbiased. You get to figure out how to actually build it. You get to be outside having fun in the sun and in the middle of all the action. So let's go back to our ship in the air. Our job is to figure out how in the wide world of sports we're going to actually put this together. How many tower cranes are we gonna need for this job? Are the capacity of our cranes enough for our biggest lifts? Do I need to build some of those steel pieces for the sky deck off site because it's overhanging the building so far so that I can connect it closer to the building and I'm not overhanging like 40 feet over nothing? How are we actually going to install the finished material underneath the ship? Do I need to build like a subfloor underneath that I can actually get up there or do I need to figure out something else? These are the types of problems that construction engineers need to solve and in a lot of cases we have to consult with a design engineer to make sure that our means and methods align with their design of the structure. Construction engineers help execute the design engineers and the architect's two-dimensional plans to three dimensions in the real world. There are also times when mistakes are made in the field and construction engineers need to consult with the design engineer to make sure that the fixes are not compromising their design. So what does a day in the life look like for a typical civil engineer? I haven't lived and breathed the design engineering side, but here's my understanding of how their days go. You'll probably be on the computer for most of the day, you know, running calculations and confirming design. It's more of an indoor job. You may have meetings with your client or the owner of the building and making sure that what you're designing is what they want. And it is very likely that you'll be working on one project and a site construction engineer from another project is gonna call you with some kind of problem. So you have to switch gears and figure out what's going on with your other project that you're doing. So it could be a little stressful. And usually if the construction site engineer is calling you, it's typically an emergency. So an example could be the reinforcing for the column is six inches in the wrong spot. So they wanna know, do I need to move the entire column over six inches when I pour it for the next floor? Or do I need to, and they call it drilling and epoxying new rebar, 
Do I need to put that in the original spot and make sure that I put the column in the right spot? You'll also make some routine job site visits, but you won't have to be on the job every single day. So it's pretty cool. You don't have to see every single day of the job and you'll be able to see big progress when you go from maybe month to month. In terms of work hours and schedule, I think you only really have to work overtime if a big deadline is coming up. You probably won't have to work weekends either depending on the company that you work for or the situation that you're in. So on the construction side of things, your day will look pretty different. For me, when I first started out at college, and even kind of now, by 6.30 to 7 in the morning, you're on site ready to go. The start of your workday is dictated by when the workers start because those are the people that you're trying to help. So in Hawaii, the workers' hours are between 7 and 3.30. So you'll start your day outside doing quality control on what's being constructed. So you'll be checking stuff like, is the reinforcing in the right spot and is it the right size and length? Is the concrete slab edge in the right spot? Do you have all of your plumbing drains set to the correct heights? You'll typically be fielding questions from the workers throughout the day and calling up designers and architects when you see any busts. To me, working out there with the guys has been the most rewarding experience for me because they actually show you how things get built. And then after the workers leave at 3.30, you go in the office and you start to do your paperwork. And that'll include reviewing drawings, checking emails, making sure all your materials are coming in on time, and just kind of setting yourself up for the next day and weeks to come. Don't be surprised if you're working for a general contractor and the expectation is that you're working a minimum of 50 hours per week. And it's a high possibility that you'll work weekends in a row. There's just so much to do and so little time in these tight construction schedules, so you just can't get all of your work done in an eight hour day. Especially since a lot of the stuff in construction is not something that is taught in school, so you have to spend the time to learn everything pretty much for the first time. For me, when I first started, I was working minimum 60 hour weeks, but it really didn't feel like work just because I love my job so much. Due to the fast paced nature of construction schedules, in design engineering and construction engineering, you can be put under a lot of stress. But at the end of the day, you get to be a part of something that's going to outlast you and that's the coolest part of civil engineering for me. So as much as engineers want to stay within the realm of design and calculations, there is a business side to everything. Even as a general statement in any industry that you're in, I think it's really important to understand your business strategy. In conversations with my colleagues that are in design engineering, their profit is driven by how many projects they can actually design. They allot a certain amount of their time that they can work on an actual project, and as long as they remain within that time frame of working on the job, they can make money for the company. So that's why during the construction of the project, if the construction engineer is overseeing the project and there's a lot of mistakes and the design engineer keeps having to work on the project, they end up losing money in the end. Design engineers also need to be aware of the materials that they're specifying for the project because if they're too expensive, the project can go over budget. And the more years you stay in the industry, the more you realize that the actual finished product of any project is really driven by the budget. Construction engineering is similar in the sense that if we finish the project under the amount of time that we're given, you'll usually make money too, just like design engineers. In construction engineering, you can get creative with actually how you build the building and look at how you can be more efficient. It's pretty cool that you can change the way you build the job to help be more efficient and make more money for you and the company. I think going into engineering, for me at least, I didn't think that money was going to be a big factor in my day-to-day -day operations, but it's definitely important. And finally, as an engineer, you'll always be working in a team. I think this ultimately ends up being the case in most professions, but in engineering especially, you're never just building or designing for yourself. There's always a team of people that need to work together to execute the project, and to be the best engineer you can be, you need to be a team player. And there will be times when you're not going to be communicating with engineers, so you need to turn that radar back and forth to make sure you can accurately communicate what you're trying to do. Teamwork makes the dream work. So if you're thinking about a career in engineering, my advice to you is to get the experience. Whether it's an internship or an entry-level job, don't be afraid to just jump in and try something new. Without internships, I probably wouldn't be in my career now, which I really consider a dream job. Without getting the experience and trying something new, I probably would be a design engineer today. But being outside and being part of the actual construction of the project was just too much fun for me to pass up. I really believe that you don't really get to know a job until you actually do it, so my advice to you is to just go out and try. There are so many types of jobs that fall under the realm of civil engineering, so you should be able to find one that suits your needs. And if you're currently majoring in civil engineering and maybe you're not getting the best grades, but you really like the material and everything I kind of just talked about really resonates with you, my advice to you is just to stick with it. So yes, bigger companies will care about stuff like GPA coming out of college, 
but there will be opportunities for you where smaller companies will give you a job just because you have the degree. And your passion and love for the material will prove that your GPA really didn't mean anything and you can be a great engineer. And then you'll be able to gain the experience for those bigger employers that you can apply to later on. Even just getting your engineering degree will look good on your resume because employers realize, you know, for all companies that Getting an engineering degree is hard. Hard work and passion will help you move up in your career, so don't get bogged down on grades right now if you really love the material. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell below, and comment please what you want to see. If you have any other questions about engineering or construction, I'd love to help you out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.